Welcome back to the Inspired Entrepreneur with Heather Hope. Hey, welcome back, everyone. This is Heather Hope with the Inspired Entrepreneur podcast. Happy, happy Sunday. How's your weekend going, guys? (laughs) So, I have been saying that in the book. So this, if you're new, welcome. If you have been here for a while, thank you for being here. Um, That this podcast is based off of my book, The Inspired Entrepreneur. It's 366 days of inspiration, which means law of attraction. That's what it really means for me. Uh, Law of attraction or inspiration for the entrepreneur. So we talk about uh, law of attraction based primarily on off of um, Abraham Hicks's work, infinite intelligence, source, that sort of stuff with business and money and life and love and everything. Because how you manifest one thing is how you manifest everything. Okay. So (laughs) I've been saying it's 366 days, which in this year, we don't have leap year. So I was going to do an extra podcast. I was going to do that day. I'm not going to post it on Facebook because I really don't want to confuse people of what day it is. And if we, if there was leap, you know what I mean? Like you guys know how confused I get of what day it is. (laughs) So I don't want to do that to other people for a day that doesn't exist. You know what I mean? This year anyway, but I am going to talk about it. So I was going to do a separate podcast, but just sitting here right now, I'm like, I'm going to combine the two. I'm going to try something new because I was just um, thinking about something. So I'm going to combine February 28th and 29th in this in this episode and see how it works. Um, cause I'm, I might be considering combining episodes, um, in the future. I don't know. Okay. Here we go. Um, let's see. I'm recording this Saturday night because I just felt so I was having kind of one of those days of like, I I went to bed feeling so ambitious. There were so many things I was going to do today. Well, actually one big thing I was going to do today and I didn't do it. I just was just not feeling it. I was kind of not, Oh, I was just in a place. (laughs) And so I, um, chilled out and then I, I kind of fell asleep and then I woke up like 20 minutes later and I was ready to go. I jumped on the treadmill and I started studying for my real estate exam. That's what I was supposed to do all day. And then I got sidetracked <laughs> the rest of the night. So whatever. Okay. So anyway, enough of that. Today is a quote from Abraham Hicks. And if you want to pick up the book, it is on Amazon. The link is down below somewhere. It's an amazing book. I love this book so much. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's like a fortune cookie. For you, anytime you open it up, you feel inspired to open it up, you think of a date, you open up to that date, you follow along each day, whatever, however you use this book, um, it can sit on your desk or on your shelf. And if you look at it and you just have this thought of like opening it up, do it. I'm telling you, it, there will be a message perfect for you in that moment. It, it's just, it's amazing <coughs> how much source is guiding. It's just, we're constantly being guided. Okay, so today's quote is, procrastination is the wisdom to not force anything you're not vibrationally ready for. When I learned about procrastination with Abraham, it just made so much sense because um, I think we talked about this last week a little bit here and there about um, when the energy, like everything's about timing, right? Right. And in the, in the world out there, our society is really, it really pushes us to hustle and a lot of hard work. And if you're not doing anything, you're lazy and you just have to push through and everything's just gonna be hard anyway. And uh, all of these things that we've been taught. Right. And, and so like, so I watch, I watch undercover billionaire on uh, discovery plus and listening to so it's season two I, the first one was pretty good i would suggest watching the first one over the second season um second season has grant cardone 
it has and it has two other one lady i don't know who she is um she's the ex-wife of tim Valin. but um and then another lady who i've never heard of before she i don't know and um designs stuff in la uh, southern california and stuff anyway they're just of course all about hustle all about getting out there doing this doing that and so the one lady from California was talking last night about, well, I'm going to, I'm going to get this done. Um, even if it kills me, basically, you know, we've heard that a million times doing this. I'm going to push, I'm going to do this. It's, it's a million dollar bet that they can start a business from scratch for, with no idea walking into it. And they tell they they need to live in for 90 days and they only have a hundred dollars and a vehicle they have nowhere to live they have nothing they have no phone with resources and they have a different identity um the identity part was super interesting with grant cardone um you can learn a lot from these people from <laughs> basically a lot of what not to do and a lot of um interesting things like grant cardone um like, I don't know how it, people don't recognize him because, I mean, I, I've known of Grant for years, but of course I'm in this space, but he's associating himself with all these entrepreneurs in, um, where is he? I forgot. He's in Colorado, but Pueblo, like all these entrepreneurs, business owners, that's who he's surrounding himself with to create a million dollar business. And nobody has recognized him. <laughs> and I'm like, how is this possible? I thought for sure as soon as I saw him on the show, I was like, there's no way. There's no way. Because he's got eight, you know, eight um, best-selling books. And he's got these enormous arenas full of people who pay him a lot of money to, you know, like, he's a big name in our, you know, in our area. At least coaching and business and stuff like that. So anyway, I don't know how these people don't know him. But... Um, anyhow, he, you know, they have to choose a different name. And so he, he was like tapping into this new identity of who he is now, like a guy with no contacts, a guy with like, he can't use the Grant Cardone experience, like past experience of Grant Cardone. He can't really, cause he's an unknown. And so his, he was going through an identity crisis and it was so interesting for me because I'm like, this is what we talk about all the time of creating a new identity and like keep stepping into that new identity and then you're going to become that person. So he was stepping back from Grant Cardone to Lewis Clark or something. I don't know. And so a guy with no money and a guy with supposedly with no experience and a guy who basically has nothing, right? And he suffered a lot and it's really cool. So maybe you should go watch that because it's so interesting. Um, I don't know if you should or not, but I like learning from these things of a lot of things of like what not to do, like comparing it to what Abraham says, um, how these people can be really successful. But, you know, Grant, you know, these people push themselves so hard Grant Cardone, you know, had COVID because this was all filmed last year, it, you know, at different parts of, um, there's three of them. So they were all filmed at different times in different cities. And Grant was at the beginning, like right before COVID. So he entered his thing and then COVID hit like 30 days later and he got COVID. And so, um, when was it? I think everything shut down, right? in March. And so they shut down production of the show and until they couldn't film the show. So they sent him back home and which sucked because he was building a lot of momentum and he didn't want to lose it. So he had to go, I don't know how long he was gone, at least like a month, maybe longer. And he comes back and very quickly he came down with COVID. He, he caught COVID. Now, it's it's funny. These little cities that they are sent to, one's Pueblo, one's Fresno, and one is um, up in Washington. Where is she? Near Seattle, but not. But 
what was oh, that one girl anyway um it's interesting because this is all filmed like we're still in, we're still in, in covid time right right now this was all filmed last year and all three towns the mask wearing is hit hit or miss with all of these i think the one up in seattle was a, a lot better but not totally but fresno virtually nobody wear, wear wears masks either and pueblo as well like literally nobody during COVID, like this was all filmed like they shut down he came back he's wearing a mask now because he had covid and now he knows how serious it is now okay i'm gonna get off my bandwagon now but i'm just saying um it's it's um so his identity was different and he was going through this major major issue of like real life like here's a person with no money nowhere to live like trying to scrape up money to find a place to live you know trying to <laughs> scrape up meaning like make money um and he went through a hard time mentally because that's not who he is isn't that so interesting you should go watch it actually go watch the season it's on Disco discovery plus it's it comes out every thursday but um that part intrigues me so much because it's what we learn, right? Of changing your identity, you change your life. He has this enormous life <laughs> and he had to change his identity to this person with no life, basically, starting from scratch, no money, no career, no job, no, you know, nothing. And he had, and the bet is that he can make a million dollar company a valuation of a million dollars in 90 days. So it's, it is a lot of struggle and it's a lot of, you know, a lot of, anyway, that's enough of that show. But <laughs> so we're taught to do all these things. Now procrastination is timing, but also energy not being lined up. So today, so these days that I have that are just like, I literally, I, I honestly, and I, and I didn't want to look back and be like, oh, I just should have done that. Like last night we were talking about, oh, we should go to the outlet mall because I wanted to go to coach for, to look at something. And, and Roger was up for that. He's, he's like, we should go. And it was like 10 o'clock last night. And I'm like, okay, so the nearest one for us is like an hour away. And so today I'm like, I literally need to do all these things today and tomorrow. And, and I'm like, maybe tomorrow we can go. Maybe, I don't know, but it sounded like kind of a, kind of a cool idea. So me not really feeling like doing anything or taking an exam or studying for real estate, you know, all these things that I had planned to do, I was like, I wonder if we should just go to the outlet mall because me like trying to make myself do something I don't want to do is not doing anything. Like I'm just not doing anything. And so I probably should have just went to the outlet mall. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you just have to do the thing that sounds fun. Now, actually, all the time you have to be doing the thing that sounds fun because the other things, if you're really trying to push a wet noodle, it's not going to be pushed. Like that's where the hard work and, and all of that plays in. And then you get very little results because there's no energy there. There's no inspiration there. So, you know, so I don't know what I should have done today. It's okay. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't beat myself up over it, but maybe tomorrow I will. Maybe, maybe I just need to take this weekend off from majority of the things and just start new on Monday. You know what I mean? Like sometimes we have these great plans because we feel good in the moment. And then when the time comes, we're just like, oh, really don't want to do this whatever reason it's just not lined up I meditated this morning it was wonderful I had a great morning I was very productive and then it was just like eh I don't want to do anything <laughs> so I, I don't know anyway so procrastination is the wisdom the wisdom to not force anything you're not vibrationally ready for this is big this is so big guys because one of the things that I know that humans do, most humans, they beat themselves up over the things that they didn't do or that they're not doing. Or, and I remember this a couple of years ago while I was learning all of this, I was like, you know, I've been 
you know, working from home for many years now. And I used to beat myself up over the days that were not productive. I used to really hate it. I used to just, just really dread all of this. I had lots of not so good feelings about everything in myself. Well, and then I learned, stop doing that because it's not helping you at all. And it's just making things worse. So I had to learn to be okay with the days that were not productive. Just be okay with that. Because if I wasn't, I was out of alignment. So I had to be okay. Like I'm okay today. I'm okay. It's everything's a learning thing. You know, it's a learning experience of like, well, maybe when I feel like this again, and I feel, feel like going to the mall or whatever, then I will go to the mall. Instead, I think I was just holding out hope that I was going to just snap out of it. And I kind of did for a minute. And then it just kind of didn't work. I just didn't feel I because you have to have a certain level of concentration, right? You have to be really into learning something like real estate or whatever that you're going, you know, taking classes for. And it's, it's, you know, for a licensing type of exam, you know, you really have to know the stuff to pass. So there's a bit of pressure there. Even though I do have a lot of confidence in this subject, it's, you know, you start getting a little bit of like, but what if, you know, I don't know enough on that exam? You know what I mean? It's rare that I think that way, but it can happen in those moments of like, not being so sure or like what am I doing right now I don't know I'm wandering around the house aimlessly because I don't feel like doing anything not so good tomorrow I'll probably be on fire because I usually don't more I don't usually have more than one or two days in a row like that so tomorrow I'll probably be fine and then I'll feel like doing a lot of things anyway that's enough of that. Procrastination is the wisdom to not force anything you're not vibrationally ready for. So don't beat yourself up over procrastination. If you're procrastinating over some, you know, about something, really, um, you got to let go of that resistance because it's resistance. You can't tell yourself you're lazy. You can't tell yourself all these negative things. You can't listen to like Grant Cardone, you know, like I don't, I don't follow the guy, you know. I, I did for a while back in the day, but you know, cause I just don't, I never resonated with the hard work. I never resonated with the hustle and the grind and the, you know, oh yeah. So the lady who's, who's doing all of this in Fresno on undercover billionaire, um, the one that's like, I'm going to do this even if it kills me. <laughs> she almost sounds serious. Like, you know, and there, she t talks about, you know, she's got mil multiple millions of dollars, right? She's, she's been very successful. But um, she says she, she puts like majority of her money into real estate and she eats a lot of ramen. She eats a lot of, like she doesn't really treat herself too often on much, you know? And I'm sitting here like, for what reason? Oh, I had to pause. I paused the show a lot because Roger watches it with me. I pause a lot because I, I go on a little like, what? Because I'm like, I pause it. I'm like, but what's the, what's the point? I don't even think she has children. I don't even think she's married. She She's not quite as bad as like Bethany Frankel. If you know Bethany Frankel, she's an absolute anxious person and she's not nice to be around. So, I mean, you know what I mean? Like she's ruthless, hardcore probably sleeps three, four hours a night and very type A, very difficult, but high anxiety, high everything, right? Very, you know, and uh, this, so this woman's not as bad as her for sure, but she's there. She's on that scale of lots of anxiety, lots of high energy, lots of kind of being ruthless, kind of being, um, a lot. And, you know, if she lives now, you know, well, like dying is, well, I mean, people die at any age. It doesn't really matter, but, um, 
you know, like heart attack, um, stuff like that would probably be her because she has a lot of resistance. She's a visionary. She has tons of ideas, she, but she's constant. She's a little high on edge, um, but, you know, not treating herself. She just wants all of her money into real estate. But I'm like, but when you die, what happens? You die rich in real estate? You die rich? Like, what is that? Like, you know what I mean? It's like one of those questions that you ask yourself. Well, do I want to enjoy life at full, you know, at the fullest? If you have millions of dollars and you just don't spend it. I mean, that's that's her life. I always end up with like, well, that's the reality she's choosing for her life. I choose differently. <laughs> I always end up saying that about different people. Because I'm like, ultimately, ultimately, we always get to choose our own reality. So if you don't like somebody else's reality, good. You don't need to. You don't need to like anybody's reality except for your own. But it's just like, I'm just like, why? And then they're on TV and they have people that are influenced by it. And, and it's like, well, it doesn't resonate with me. I want to enjoy my life while I'm living in the material, physical world, right? I'm not going to kill myself working, you know, 20 hours a week trying or try 20 hours a week. That sounds nice, right? 20 hours a day under a lot of stress, you know, like that's never resonated with me. It's like, no, I'd rather not. <laughs> no, thanks. So anyway, but I, I just question like, what's the point? What's the point of dying rich? You know, I really like, um, like, who are these people? Like the one guy, if you don't know who he is, oh, it's such a cool story. I wish I knew his name now. I was going to get the book written about him. The guy, like the one of the richest men in the world gave all his money away. It was like a ton of billions of dollars. It was a lot. Um, I'll have to remember. He's up in San Fran, or he's over in San Francisco. He's a cool old guy. But back, I think it was in, oh, what was it? Oh, a couple of years ago, 2018 is when... He ended up with $2 million left to his name. That was his goal to spend, give away all of his money. It was billions and billions of dollars. Because why? Why Why do you need all of that money? He didn't have, you know, he set up things, right? He set up, but he set up this whole thing of this foundation that his money went to. It was set up like legally to take all of his assets, all his money, and to give it to all over the place. He just, it was really, it's a cool story. It's a really cool story. So he ended up, he has, a, you know, a two bedroom, you know, condo in, in San Francisco for him and his wife. And they're like in their eighties and they have, they ended up with 2 million to their name to live the rest of their lives. And, you know, here's the thing. He had a good time. Well, he's the guy who um, I think co-founded, um, what's it called? Duty Free. The Duty Free all over the world. <laughs> um, the shops, the alcohol, the du Duty Free and airports and and um, cruise ships and all of that. He's the co-founder. Like He's made a ton of money, right? So he had a good time in his life making the money. And then he had a really good time in his life giving it all away. Like, how cool is that? Instead of this, like, anxious <laughs> woman who just wants to put all of her money into real estate and die rich and eat ramen. Like, I don't know. Like I say, they get to choose their own reality. It's like, it's like the choose your own adventure books in school. <laughs> You get to choose your own reality. So I like the billionaire guy making all this money and then giving it all away. He gets to see where his money goes. He got to see where it goes. He put a billion dollars into oh, um, the college he went to. I forgot. I forgot. Oh, I should look up his story again. It's so good. There's like an hour-long documentary about it on YouTube. I'll have to look it up because it's just incredible incredible so anyway oh yeah that's right we're gonna combine two I was gonna say goodbye but let's combine the next one let's combined so February 29th leap year when's our next leap year guys 
I don't know. I, I think Roger said leap year was last year. So I don't know. It doesn't matter. So in the book, I added leap year because I'm, I'm always including everyone and everybody and everything. Don't want to leave anyone out. So let's get to February 29th. This is a good one. This is something I used to do every morning. So every morning I answer the question, who am I? The identity I have created and keep expanding on is what I answer. I start my day as that person. Who are you? I think I got this from a coach I worked with a while back. Like, who am I? Just really, I have the journal somewhere, but I would write, who am I? I think I would write, like, write my reality first. Like, I'm a badass. I am um, a multimillionaire. I am all these things, right? All these affirmations that I put a lot of energy into it and I would read out loud and that worked really well for a while. Um, and then I would write another page. I'm like, who am I? And I would write like, I am, you know, all these things. And I would just get into kind of a scenario about who I am as this person. And it was like, I would start my day that way. And it felt so incredible. Maybe I'll start again. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have so many rituals in the morning. It's funny. But um, yeah. So right, who am I? Decide, because you get to decide who you are. You get to decide who you want to be. I was listening to an Abraham today about people telling their stories like okay so I'm like this because like I'm like this characteristic whatever it is because my parents blah 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 when I was a kid and the and Abraham's like the only reason why you are like that is because you keep holding on to the story that keeps you there so if you stop telling the story stop beating the drum right of what is or has been and you start stepping into the person that you want to be you're going to let that story go over time it's not going to be a part of you like I've said in the past like when I compare myself now to who I used to be it is night and day it is absolutely I'm a totally different person I'm still kind of the same person you know kind of the same person, but I'm just so different. I am not shy. I am not quiet. I am not so many things, just so many things. I'm not self-conscious. I'm not, oh my gosh. Like, and this just, I mean, this happened over time of, you know, personal development. And then more and more in the last couple of years with Abraham of like understanding, stop talking about your problems stop talking about who you used to be stop talking about everything that you didn't like about your past stop retelling the story because you're you're reactivating the vibration so this woman <laughs> some of these women are no I don't want to say women but a lot of them are women are very anxious and very like needy and very like telling the story for 35 years and Abraham kept um, interrupting her and was like, like, cause she's like, well, I want to let go. And they're like, the only reason why it's here is because you just went back 35 years or you just retold, you just reactivated the vibration. If you don't reactivate the vibration, it lies dormant and it will not reactivate until you talk about it like that. You know what I mean? It's not like it's there and it's doing all this damage. Like, a lot of people believe subconscious is doing to you. Subconscious is doing nothing to you. That is <laughs> that's a big psychology thing that majority of the population believes. But Abraham says it's not true. There's nothing there. There's nothing playing in the background. The only thing is your beliefs. Where you last left your your vibration in a subject but if you don't touch the subject and you get yourself happy things will get better like things get better so when things are going really well it's because I've let go of resistance I'm meditating 
every morning feeling really good, I'm focusing on the things that I'm working towards, that I'm gravitating towards. I said uh, this week of having days of just constant manifestation, constant thoughts, constant telepathy, constant, all these things. And it was happening again yesterday. Um, oh gosh, it's just incredible. I, Roger said it again. He's like, cause he'll tell the do- my dog Gizmo. He's like, okay, Gizmo, it's time to go. <laughs> cause he's like, mommy's being extra witchy today. Cause it's like, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The things that happen. Like, I can't even tell you most of them because it's so involved. It's like, you'd have to know like my whole life, not my whole life, but like what's going on. And it's like so many details. And that's what's so interesting. It's like so many things unfolding. So the universe is like giving you breadcrumbs of to follow. And when you're in the receptive mode, you're going to pick up those breadcrumbs one by one. And over time, they're going to connect. You're going to be like, oh my God, it led me to here. And that's how it was last night incredible and then I'd be like having another another thought to know something and then like an hour later it pops up pops up in my Facebook feed I'm like you're kidding me one thing after another after another after another with ease with total ease so get into a good mood (laughs) don't stress out about anything anything get into a really good playful happy mood and literally watch things unfold in front of you, just right in front of you, like with n- very little effort, like no effort. Most of these things have no effort at all. And it's like, things are so easy. Things are so easy because I've let go of all the worry, the doubt, the anything, anything. Let it all go. Okay, guys, I am going to go. The second day was super short, <laughs> but let's 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 let you go and so you can enjoy your Sunday okay guys so have an amazing rest of your day and I'll be back tomorrow bye